Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about some skimmer issues. I just finished a couple of episodes on filter issues, so I thought I would continue the trend and talk about pool skimmers and some issues you may have with those. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. I'll start with a pool with heavy debris. Sometimes a pool has so much debris, there's trees around it, and the skimmer basket gets impacted. This means that when you get to the stop, you hear the pump, and it's kind of going, ging, 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 and then it's maybe even vibrating pretty violently. In most cases, that's because the skimmer basket is completely impacted with debris. Sometimes it'll even tear the skimmer basket. So, of course, when I get to a pool and I notice that the pump is making an odd noise and it's vibrating, I'll go to the skimmer and take the lid off and check it. And sure enough, 9 out of 10 times, there's just so much debris in there that water can't pass through. And that's why the pump is kind of vibrating and not being able to pull the water. There's just a lot of resistance in the skimmer. Now, you can't really pull the skimmer basket out in this case because there's just too much debris in there. So what I do is I turn the pump off and then I take the skimmer basket out and empty it. Typically, I like to take the skimmer basket out when the pump is running. It just makes it easier to empty it out without debris getting past it into the pump. And it's one of those things where if it's not impacted with debris, it's pretty easy to do. So emptying the skimmer basket regularly will prevent that from happening. And that's kind of a key to pool service. Every time you go to the stop, you want to empty the skimmer basket. Now, if it is a pool with heavy debris, the customer should be emptying the skimmer basket during the week for you to kind of help you out. Sometimes pools that have heavy debris have two skimmers, which comes in handy. If they don't, then you want to get what's called the pool skim. This is a great device that threads into a one and a half inch return line. And again, you're going to have to have one and a half, half inch threaded return lines for this to work. And it creates a secondary skimmer in your pool. It's a great device. If you don't have that setup, you can of course get a solar power surface skimmer like the Aerial or the Beta. These are a great way to keep that debris load down from the skimmer so that it doesn't get impacted and cause problems with the system. I've seen pumps vibrate so violently that it causes a leak at the plumbing. So you don't want that to happen if you have a pool with heavy debris. In most cases, pools have lighter debris, so that's not a problem. I did mention a minute ago that I like empty it out when the pool's running. To me, this is the most optimal way. That way debris doesn't get past and go through to the pump. But again, you just have to use your judgment on that. If you can't pull it out of the skimmer, there may be too much debris sucking the basket down. And you also want to inspect the skimmer basket for any kind of cracks in the basket itself. Because that means that debris is passing into the pump. Now sometimes you'll have that vibration problem at the pump. Because there's a lot of debris in the pump basket also. And that normally happens if the skimmer has a problem. A hole or a crack in there. And then the pump basket is actually impacted with debris. And it's going to have very similar symptoms with the vibrating. But you can pretty much see clearly into the pump lid if it's not, you know, glazed over from being out in the sun for 10 years. You can see that the pump basket is full. But the skimmer basket is really crucial because it keeps the pump basket free of debris so that it can actually run. One of the things that happens if the pump basket gets full of debris is that the impeller just doesn't work well. And basically, you're going to have really poor flow coming out of the return line. You might, might even see the pressure gauge on the filter drop down to like 5 or 6 or even lower, sometimes even 0. So you definitely want to make sure that the skimmer basket is intact so that the debris doesn't go into the pump basket, which will cause the system to basically short circuit and you're not going to have any flow, which causes all kinds of problems with the pool. Another thing that you'll notice with the skimmer is that most of them have what we call a weir gate, and this is a rectangular piece of plastic, usually about 6 inches tall and about 8 inches wide, and there's some way for this to connect to the skimmer. Sometimes it's, there's notches in the skimmer and it's built in. Sometimes there's a spring-loaded compression that holds it in. Basically, what the weir gate does is when the pool turns off, because there's some foam at the top of it, it'll actually float and close 
and this will act like a gate so that the debris in the skimmer basket won't go back into the pool. It's also good when there's people using the pool and swimming. It keeps debris from being stirred up in the skimmer basket and knocked back into the pool. So the weir gate is really important. And I find that when I take over a lot of service accounts, the weir gate is missing. And the weir gate also accelerates how much water the skimmer pulls into the pool. So if you're at a pool and you notice that the skimmer is just not working well, there's not pulling debris in there, it may just be something as simple as a weir gate being missing from the front of it. And you can also get a replacement weir gate. They sell various brands of it and they have like a compression spring that locks it in. But the weir gate is important because again, the foam on top will float, will float the weir gate closed, just like kind of like, you know, in the, the old castles and the medieval times, you had a drawbridge and they had a moat around it and they pull that drawbridge up to close off the castle. Same concept with the skimmer. So that makes the weir gate really crucial. So if you have a service account and there's no weir gate, definitely go out and get a replacement one and put it there because that's going to really prevent the debris from falling back in the pool when it turns off and also when people are swimming. And it's also going to accelerate the skimmer action of the pool. And one problem you may have if you have a barrel speed pump is you may run it at too low of a speed for too long of a time and not have a medium or high speed to actually pull the brain to the skimmer. One device that really helps is called the Skim Doctor 2.0. This is a device that was invented that attaches to the top of your existing skimmer basket and uses what's called the Venturi effect. It creates a vortex that pulls water in a lot faster. So if you're running a VS pump at like 2100 RPMs, it'll probably be more like 2400 RPMs with the Skim Skim Doctor 2.0 on there. This is unscientific. I'm just kind of estimating the extra velocity that it pulls in because it kind of closes off the area where the skimmer basket is slightly creating more of a vortex. And so this is definitely something that can help if you're running the pool pump at a lower RPM, but you definitely need a medium or high speed. So I would say sometime during the day, the pump should come at a 2400 or 2600 RPMs so that it'll actually pull some debris into the skimmer. Again, you can also use a solar power surface skimmer. These are highly effective for pools with barrel speed pumps on them. And I would recommend that if you're having problems with the skimmer picking up debris in the pool. Now, if you take out the skimmer basket and you look down in underneath it, there's two variations of pool skimmers that they would install. In the old days, there's one hole skimmers. If you have an older pool, the skimmer may only have one hole in it. And this requires a diverter valve for it to activate and work properly. The diverter valve inside the one hole skimmer will control the flow from the main drain as well as the actual skimmer. And sometimes when I take over an account, the diverter valve is missing. This is problematic because there are several different brands of diverter valves and it may get confusing trying to replace it. My best suggestion is to go to your supplier or pool store and buy every type of diverter valve they sell. They can be a little bit expensive too, depending on the brand of it, but they have, some are made by Valpac, some are made by Hayward, some are American product, and you also have a Pentair one. You know, you have an Anthony uh, skimmer and Pentair has an Admiral skimmer. So again, they're all a little different in shape. I think the Hayward one is pretty common and you're going to find a lot of the pools with the Pentair Admiral, if they're the older pools or the Anthony skimmers. The good way to kind of tell what skimmer it is, if, if they have the original skimmer lid, look at the original skimmer lid and you can see the manufacturer. Usually on the top of it will say Pentair or Hayward. That'll give you a clue of which diverter valve you're going to need. The diverter valve has threads on it and there's like a notch indicator. There's, if you look at the skimmer carefully, you're going to see um, some notches at the bottom and the diverter valve is set so that the little tab actually is what I should probably refer to it as kind of matches up inside the skimmer with the notches. And then you can see if it's the main drain being activated or the skimmer being activated more as far as suction and some thread in, some don't thread in. So it's one of those things where it's kind of hit and miss of which diverter valve you need. Some are longer than others. At the bottom is a angle, about 90 degree angle, and this is where it actually diverts it. It's kind of almost like a check valve where it'll shut off when the pool turns off, it'll stop the flow. And this is kind of like a permanent check valve for the main drain or the skimmer, depending on where you want to set it. 
I always usually set these where the main drain is off completely and you have full skimmer power. I find that this is much more effective. And so if you get to a pool and you have a one hole skimmer and nothing is being pulled in, chances are that the diverter valve is either set to the main drain or it's set or it's missing. And that's one reason why the skimmer doesn't have power. They do sell a tool that can actually extract them. Sometimes they get jammed in there. You can't turn them. And you can actually pick up a special tool that turns. And you can use that tool to remove these diverter valves. And that particular product is called Pool Tool Diverter Removing Tool. It's 126 is the model number. Again, that's Pool Tool Diverter Removing Tool. And this is a special um, tool that connects to your socket and your, um, I guess it's a crescent wrench or socket wrench, and you can turn these diverter valves out and you can actually turn them because they get really stiff in there. So if you have a two-hole skimmer, you're going to have a what's called a float diverter valve in there. And these are for more of the newer pools. This float diverter valve controls the flow from the main drain and the skimmer. And in most cases, you're going to have more skimming power and you can also adjust it. There's like a little thing on the bottom that you can open and close like a little gate and you can adjust this a little bit to change the flow slightly and this is designed to protect the skimmer if the pool were to run low on water that float diverter valve will actually activate and close and then all the suction will be from the main drain at that point and not from the skimmer this is a great way to save the pump and the builders like these because this is kind of like a safety feature so that if the pool that water does get low, this will activate and the skimmer won't be pulling air and which could burn out the pump. And so usually if you have a two hole skimmer, you have what's called a float diverter valve. It looks like a UFO. I call it a UFO. And basically if you have a two hole skimmer and there's no float diverter valve in there, probably missing. I found that a lot of new builds, the builders forget to put them in. They'll leave them over by the equipment and then invariably the customer will throw them away thinking, hey, what is this thing? I don't need it. And so they don't have it. I have a bunch of them in my garage and I carry them in my truck so I can drop them in when I need to. There are slight variations of the models also on the float diverter valve, the UFO device. So you want to make sure it matches the skimmer. Again, look at the skimmer lid for a clue of which one it is. For most pools, Pentair is very common. Builders like putting Pentair skimmers in. But that's pretty necessary for the flow to be regulated so you have really good skimming power with your skimmer. Now, in here in California, a lot of builders put in waterway skimmers. I'm not a huge fan of the waterway skimmers, mainly because of that locking skimmer basket. To me, it's a pain. It's very frustrating. It's unnecessary. And these locking skimmer baskets invariably get jammed in the skimmer. And then you're cutting it out with a razor blade. You're pulling it apart with a pair of channel locks. It's just annoying. So if you do pools in Southern California, waterway skimmers are really popular. And you're going to run into these locking skimmer baskets. The first thing I do is I just get rid of that locking skimmer basket. And I just put a generic basket in. And then I'll put a rock in there to hold it down. And that way I can easily empty out the skimmer basket. It's really frustrating for customers too to try to empty the skimmer basket and it's locked in there. So for me, the waterway locking skimmer baskets just are really a pain. And I just replace those baskets right away. Now, if you notice that your skimmer basket is floating, I did mention I put a rock in there. If you do use a rock, you want to make sure the rock is larger than the one and a half inch skimmer opening because what could happen is, you know, the kids could be playing in the pool and sometimes the customer will try to empty the basket or whatever happens, that rock may fall out and it may go into the skimmer hole. And if it is the exact size, it gets sucked in, you have a major problem on your hands trying to get that rock out of there. You may even have to call someone to, you know, a plumber or someone to get it out. So basically, you want to put a large rock. I like using flat rocks and I like them to be at least three inches wide and two inches in diameter so that it'll never get pulled into the skimmer if it does fall out of the basket. But it really helps to hold it down. Now they do sell weighted baskets also. You can buy them for most of the brand skimmers. And these baskets have a built-in weight. Basically, you want to put something in the basket to hold it down because they tend to float when the pool turns off. If there's no weight in there. There's some nice baskets also that have a, a nice middle piece that holds it in from the, the top of the skimmer. So definitely you want to make sure you have a rock in there to hold it down. Now Hayward has a basket. It's the B37 basket. And it's a really large skimmer basket. So if you have a Hayward skimmer with a B37 basket, 
there's one component that you're going to need to actually make this actually work effectively. And that's the B38 floating weir that goes in the B37 basket. I can't tell you how many accounts I've taken over with the Hayward B37 basket in there. And the B38 float is missing. It invariably gets lost by the customer or just they don't think it's an important accessory. And it's not in there. So to make the Hayward skimmer work effectively and most of these don't have a weir gate on them so i mentioned at the beginning that a lot of skimmers have weir gates you'll find that the hayward skimmers that had the b37 basket with the b38 float don't necessarily have a weir gate because that would just cause way too much flow what happens when the pool turns off this actually floats up and stops the debris from going back in so the b38 floating weir acts as kind of like the weir that goes on the front of the skimmer but this actually will make the skimmer work. And if you don't have the B38 float and you have the Hayward skimmer basket in there, it's not gonna activate and work properly. And so the B38 float is really crucial. And when you have that in there working with it, it works tremendously well. I really like this Hayward skimmer. I wish more builders would have put these in because the B37 basket with the B38 float in there, floating weir, to me is the most effective skimmer basket on the market. And I think it's much more effective than the Pentair and Waterway skimmers. But they're not really popular in California. A lot of builders, again, go with Pentair. And unfortunately, they go with Waterway with those locking baskets, which are a real pain. Let me talk a little bit here about having an automatic suction side cleaner connected at the skimmer. Now, in the past, you would have to remove the skimmer basket. And then debris would get in there and clog up the regulator valve in a lot of cases and then the cleaner would just have way too much suction if you do pull service you know exactly what i'm talking about it's really you know this happens a lot with the hayward regulator valves and the little blue dial gets full of debris one way to prevent that is to get the hole in one basket this is a basket that i invented with a hole in the bottom of it that is the perfect size to fit an automatic cleaner hose into it and that way you can have a skimmer basket, you slide the cleaner hose through the basket, you put the regulator valve into the skimmer. Now this works on most skimmers, it's compatible with like 90% of skimmers, not every skimmer, but the hole-in-one basket is a great way to connect your automatic suction side cleaner into the skimmer and still have a basket. Now you can of course cut a hole in the bottom of your basket, but then it's ruined, and so if you have a party, and you want to put that basket in, you have a hole in the bottom. So with my hole in one basket, you can keep your, your skimmer basket, put it by the equipment. And if you do have a party, you can just take out the cleaner and the hole in one basket, put your skimmer basket in. Because the last thing you want to do is run your pool without a skimmer basket. I can't tell you how many times I've seen pools clogged up with water balloons, with debris, with a t-shirt. Believe it or not, a t-shirt got sucked into the skimmer because the basket was missing. And this was a big mess getting it out. I mean, the plumber had a hard time blowing it out with CO2 even. But a t-shirt got blown out to the return line. And that's the only way they were able to remove that t-shirt. So it's crucial that when you have a party, if you have a suction side cleaner connected at the skimmer and you remove it, you want to make sure you put the skimmer basket in. So if you do remove your skimmer basket so that the automatic cleaner can be connected there, Keep it by the pump or the filter, and then you can put it back in when you need to. And again, that's why the whole one basket is, you know, a really crucial part for a pool with an automatic cleaner connected to it. Because you can use my whole one basket, the leaves will be trapped in the skimmer, and you'll have your original skimmer basket to use when you have a party or when you take the cleaner out. Now, Pentair does sell what's called the VacMate. This is a fairly effective device. It works mainly in Pentair skimmers. And it's compatible, I guess, to every skimmer if you can adjust it. But it does take some time to adjust it because it's not really made for anything but a Pentair skimmer, technically. And this is a device where you can connect the cleaner hose. And there's actually a weir and a lid on top. And that's what's going to actually trap the debris in the basket that comes with the VacMate. I like them. They're a little expensive. They're hard to adjust. They're a pain to clean because you take it out, you have to take the hose off, you have to unscrew the bottom. To me, it's a big hassle. I think the whole one basket is much more convenient. It's probably a fifth of the cost of the VacMate, and it's really effective because you're using the skimmer, the regulator valve for the cleaner that came with it in the skimmer, and you're not having to worry about adjusting the VacMate to get the suction perfectly working. So the VacMate does have a place but I really feel like it really, you have to tinker with it and it's a lot of adjusting. And if the water level does get just a little bit low in the pool, 
The vac mate tends to suck a lot of water in and it's really ineffective at that point. And last, let me touch on the actual water level of the pool. You want the water to be about halfway at the skimmer at all times. Some pools were designed that can take less water. Most pools have been designed so that the water level is halfway up the skimmer. So if you look at the opening, if you're standing at your pool, you look at the opening, the skimmer should have should be halfway covered with water and halfway without water to be effective. Now, if you get a lot of rain like we had here and it's totally over the skimmer opening, don't worry about it. It just means that the pool's not going to be skimming properly, but it's not going to affect the overall pool. You can drain it down if you wanted to. I just let it evaporate naturally in most cases. But having too much water is not as bad as having too little water. Now, if you have too little water and you don't have the float diverter valve or that particular skimmer is missing the O-ring for the float diverter valve because there is an O-ring in the bottom of the skimmer. And by the way, if you notice that the water is low and the float diverter valve is not activating, check the bottom and see if there's a black O-ring there. If that's missing, that float diverter valve is not going to seal and it's not going to be effective. But if you don't have one of those in the skimmer, it's definitely going to be a problem when the water level gets too low. The pump's going to start sucking air and you could cause the pump to burn out, the motor to burn out, or it could cause a leak right there at the pump. So make sure you keep the proper water level. I would say in most cases, if you don't have an autofill, you're adding water at least once a week here in Southern California, maybe even twice a week on those really hot weeks when it's 100 degrees plus. But you definitely want to keep the skimmer halfway up with water. If you have tiles around your pool, most builders put the grout line right at the halfway point. And so you can kind of use the grout line of your tiles to see if the pool water is too low or too high. But the water level is critical, especially in the summer, for the proper operation of the pool. And it's really frustrating when the water level gets low and the pool's not running all week and then it develops algae. It's not, you know, there's debris everywhere. So the water level is really critical to the proper operation of the pool. And you definitely want to keep that water level up. And you want to make sure the skimmer lid, if it cracks or if it's missing, you want to replace it. There's several pool guys that I know that have stepped in it when they were cleaning the pool. And that's something else you want to make sure that while you're vacuuming the pool, if you're using the skimmer. And that's one reason why I like to, when I'm vacuuming a pool, I like to put the hose directly over the deck. Because, you know, you can step in there and you can actually break your ankle by having your foot stuck in the skimmer. And it, without the lid, it's a hazard for kids because they can take the skimmer basket out and they can stick their hand into the skimmer pipe. You don't want them to do that when the pool's running. That's definitely a major hazard. So make sure the skimmer lid is intact and they make many generic skimmer lids. Again, you can match the skimmer lid by just looking at the top. It will say Hayward or Pantera or Waterway on top. And those are the popular skimmer lids that are in my area. But make sure that lid is on there, not only for the safety of you walking around the pool, but the safety of children that could actually stick their hands inside there and get entrapped. So the, the lid is super critical. And I carry spare lids in my truck under my seat so that I always have a lid in case the lid's cracked or missing. But you definitely want to make sure, again, that lid is on that skimmer. If you're looking for other podcasts that I've recorded, you can find them on my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. Just go to the banner, click on the podcast icon. That'll take you to a drop-down menu of other podcasts I recorded. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.